Good morning. It is Thursday, April 30th. My name is Lincoln Shrike, joined by Gordon Mack. It is the Flow Track podcast coming to you from our respective homes somewhere in Central Texas. Today on the show, we are going to be talking about all time NAU cross country rosters. We'll build fantasy top sevens for the men and for the women. The men, of course, have had all the success of late, but pr- plenty of superstars have come on the, the women's side of Lumberjacks. Gordon, how are you doing today? Doing good. I appreciate you uh, restarting the podcast for us. For those who don't know, we did a quick uh, fake intro two minutes before this recording, and uh, mm-hmm. I forced Lincoln to restart. So uh, I appreciate you, uh, Lincoln. And uh, we're going to get this going because... It's kind of surprising, I think, that uh, when you think of NAU cross country, obviously in the moment right now, you think of the men's side, right? Especially with their streaks and the women not making the meet for like 10 plus years until this past season. But they have some ballers up top who, you know, who would make a legit cross country all star roster if we got to take the all time NAU team versus other all time teams so i think it's gonna be fun to kind of put together a top seven if we were a a coach of history for all the success that the men have had particularly of late they've never had an individual ncaa cross-country champion and the women have had two so there's there's some balance here yes we know the team primarily for their success with the men but the women have uh, a couple advantages over them being having individual champs so that's something we'll dive into uh let's go ahead and get started gordon who's the first name you're going to put on the all-time nau top seven we we can go you can work from your number seven man to your number one man or we can just go your heavy hitters first whichever way you want to you want to go first uh i think we'll start with a uh well you know let's change it up uh, I'll start with a, a lower tier, not lower tier, but with my five, six, seven range for the women. We're doing the women first. So five, okay. six, seven range. I'm going to have to go with someone who uh, was a All-American multiple times. She was 40th in uh, 1990, and she was 21st in 1991 and 1992. So back-to-back years, 21st. Three-time All-American. I'm going to have to go with Tracy Jarman from the early 90s. To She'll probably be my set number seven runner. But Tracy Jarman, my number seven runner. Three-time All-American. Not bad. A three-time All-American. And finishing 21st, finishing in the exact same place in back-to-back years, just in general, a hard thing to do. I mean, finishing 21st is hard enough. But the exact same place... You are you're doing something consistent in in training and a three time All American as your number seven runner. I, I, I that's a pretty good team. We're not even counting on her to score. She's exactly. just there to to rack up her own individual individual medal. That's pretty good. I like that pick. Yep. Should I g- keep going? Should I do my pick number two? You, you can do one, and I'll and then I'll jump in after that. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'll I'll, I'll do one more. Uh, you know, five, six, seven type runner. We're going with Veronica Powell from the late 2000s. Uh, 2008, she was 16th. 2009, she was 38th. Again, another multi-time All-American, two-time All-American back-to-back years. Uh, if someone has the consistency to be All-American twice or more, you know, right. th- that means you you could potentially be an all-time great for NAU. I mean, we haven't got to their big... They're big studs up front here, but there's a couple. Yeah. So yeah, Veronica Powell and Tracy Jarman are my two. Yes. Yeah. I support those. And then we have another multiple time all American here that we're going to be pulling from. I'll make the next selection for, I don't know, our final score, the fifth, the fifth runner, uh, Lara Treadwell. Now she finished in 19, 19- 89 21st and then two years later 37th in 1991 so just a two-time all-american i don't know if in 1990 but that's a pretty solid fifth runner and man the the nau teams of the late 80s early 90s pretty pretty solid 
pretty solid stuff there. I want to see what they did as far as teams. Yeah, because if you look at 1991, they were third, and that is their lone podium finish in school history on the women's side. But that team that had Jarman and Treadwell, pretty stacked, pretty stacked roster there. Those were your your one two. So that's it. That's the best team in NAU women's history, the '91 squad, and they had Treadwell uh, finishing 37th, Jarman 21st, as well as so- Christy Kleinert in in there. So they had three All Americans. I mean, that's that's pretty that's pretty outstanding. So uh, here's the thing. So these past three athletes that we mentioned, Treadwell. Uh, Jarman and Victor and Veronica Powell. That's going to be the basically one of those three are going to be our fifth score. We don't know who it is because our top mm. four runners are going to s- certainly be the top four runners, and that is what's going to make this NAU women's team, you know, a legit uh, a, contender. A, a pr- pretty good powerhouse there. When you when, when you know when you're running with two. NCAA champions, NCAA cross country champions, which they're gonna have. Yeah, they're they're gonna the lumberjack women. Uh, they're they are uh, they're gonna be pretty formid- formidable. They're gonna look like the Colorado women's team of of uh, 2018 when everybody was an all American. So, who are one of your big guns up front? Yes. So. This is a good question. This is this so, is good. So- I'm gonna go. The first Nielsen sister that I'm going to select, Ida Nielsen. Now, she was a two-time champion on the track, I believe the 5,000 and the steeple. But she finished 8th, ninth, and 12th in her career in cross country. So three top 15 finishes. Well, three top 12 finishes, if you will, if you will throughout her career. Uh, really, really nice NAU career. Uh, the, the Nielsen sisters, which we'll get to the other one in just a moment. But if she's your four, that's pretty solid. Three top 15 finishes is really what you want out of a number three. Or four, I should say, number four. And then I think going with her, you got to go with her sister as well, Johanna uh, Nielsen, who is a three-time All-American herself, also a national champion. In 2005, she won in 2003 she was 10th and in 2012 she was on the 2003 she was 10th and in 2002 she was 12th so but if you're an ncaa champion in 2005 you make the the roster there's not many ncaa champions in this world on the on the cross country side because there's only one race every year it's not like there's 18 or you could argue there's what 36 ncaa champions crowned in each gender every year when you combine indoor and outdoor for all the different races and events but in cross country there's right. just one champion so to be on that list is very hard and Johanna Nielsen won it in 2005 so she's on this top 7 squad for NAU women is she is she not our number 1 is she, she's got to be our number 1 or 2 right yeah yeah oh yeah i mean they're going to be running as a pack i'm not i'm not i'm not ranking the top 4 i no. think all the top 4 are counted together okay well if we're if we're jumping to our number ones, to our super super low sticks, the, the two that are going to be fighting it out for national titles, I have to go with Angela Chalmers. She won in 1986, the first NAU national cross country champion in school history. Her and Nielsen are the only two ever. Uh, she ended up with a medal at the Barcelona Olympics in 1992 for Canada in the 3000, which they do not run, of course, anymore. But uh, an Olympic medalist inside in your top seven. I, I I really like that, and I think she could be our number one. I, I I feel really good about Chalmers being up there. And now we have two national champions. This is becoming a pretty solid top seven. Yeah, and then to round up that top seven, another top four probably positioned wise on the team will be Reek Peterson, who in yeah. 1996 was a top ten finisher. Uh, top ten is hard to get. Um, so yeah, I mean you get the the Nielsen s- sisters, Chalmers, Peterson, Jarman, Treadwell, and Paul. I mean, I mean if they can get their fifth to show up on the end of the day of, from their bottom three runners, they're going to be putting their top five in that top. You know, when you take everyone's all time greats, 
most likely they're all probably be in that top 40 area, especially Nielsen and Chalmers. Yes. And I like, I am wanting to have as many from the 1991 team as we possibly can. Cause that was a loaded group. We left out Chris, Christy Kleinert, but to have Treadwell, to have Jarman on that group, uh, that's pretty solid. Cause they were third that year. And, uh, yeah, I just think that's a that's a good group to include. So, with the top two of Chalmers and Nilsson, another Nilsson sister, Peterson, Treadwell, Pole, Jarman. I'm sure there's a name I I left out at that at that point, but it's a good group. Little people I think would be less familiar, of course, with the women's squad, but really you can build an all star cast with the NAU ladies. Very true, very true. And it would be, I mean, as we do this brain exercise, you create these all-time great, you know, top seven historical rosters for each school. It would be interesting to, once we create these rosters, like we're doing because it's NAU week, we're doing it here with the men and the women, to do it with other schools. And then, you know, let's come up with a virtual, It's we're in quarantine, baby, right? Let's create a virtual cross-country algorithm that where we take all of these teams all stars and we put them in the like put it. them into the pot, mix it up and see what happens. And does like you know this NAU women's team finish in the top ten among all the schools? Does the NAU men's team win it? Right, they probably could win it because you know clearly they have some great talent. So it's gonna be interesting to see uh, if we start doing this with other schools, how uh, NAU will stack up against them. Right. I'm just looking at the results of the 90. I'm, I'm now consumed with the 1991 cross country championships. That year, the team that finished behind NAU, the women, Cornell. Can you imagine Cornell on the podium right now? It's just, it's hard to think. I mean, we, you know, it, it, Ivy League schools have been solid in years past. We th think of Harvard winning the Northeast region this past fall. But uh, podium is a little bit different. It's just funny to look at years years back. Shout out to to Cornell, but I don't I don't think we're gonna see them on the podium anytime soon. But anyways, that's all I got for for that. So should we move over to the men? Time for the men. Let's see, uh, this is the hard roster to make. I I got I gotta say, there's gonna be some big names that are left off this list. Uh, yeah, there, the, there's definitely the gonna be. NAU. I mean. Just full disclosure, I so yesterday I did a top ten NAU athletes of all time, and several of the women we just mentioned were were on there. Chalmers, Nils, both the Nielsen sisters, uh, almost a guy who almost didn't make the top ten for me, Diego Estrada. He was tenth, and I originally had him out because I was I was I was going back and forth between him and Andy Truard because the argument for Truard, the argument for Estrada over Truard is. He had a lot more All-American honors. He also ran 13-15 outdoors. But Truard got a yeah, national he, title, yeah. and and Estrada did not. And so I was really wanting to put Truard, but I thought, you know, any NAU stands out there, a team without <laughs> Diego Estrada. I know how respected Estrada is in Flagstaff and for how good he was kind of before NAU was this team powerhouse. Now, they had some good teams, but they were not – of the the quite the league they are now so i couldn't leave estrada off but just on, as an aside would you have put truard or estrada in the top 10 because i had to leave one of them off i would have kept estrada in the top 10 purely because he's a school record holder in pretty much all the events yeah. from the mile up yeah like yeah you look at the the nau like uh record board that they have hanging in their hallway it just says it, i think estrada's name is on there four or five times so you know, like even though Truard does have that individual title, I still think that, you know, historically yeah. though, he is the fastest runner to ever run for NAU while yeah. running in an NAU jersey. So I think And the argument the could be had for him the argument could be had for him to be uh to be higher on the list than, you know, maybe he's higher than Matt Baxter. I just I you know, being key pieces in a dynasty, that that held more weight for me than than just being a, a guy who chalked the record books. Okay. Uh, let's get to it. The men's side, let us start our top seven. You want to go first? So, yeah, the way we want to do this, I think what, we're going to be co-coaches, all right? We're both mm. we're co-coaching. 
Can and I be Mike we Smith? Both get to, yeah, you're okay. Yeah, you can be Mike Smith, and I'll be Eric Hines. Okay. So it'll be okay. back to the 2016 okay. days, right? You're Mike yeah. Smith, so you got to talk like Mike Smith now, moving forward in this pod. Okay, oh, you that do sounds uh, Gordon. That sounds good. <laughs> there you go. There you go. And I'll be Eric Hines. Hi guys. Uh, yeah. And um, what we're gonna do is we each are gonna get to pick an athlete back and forth, and we can't we can't argue with it. We gotta let the coach have the pick. Okay. So we we'll each get. We'll each get three picks, and then that seventh pick, we'll we'll fight over it, and we'll figure that out. So, uh, I'm gonna go first, and okay. I'm gonna pick who I think is most deserving. So that's how I'm gonna order my picks based on most deserving. So okay. my most deserving athlete to be on the all-time cross-country roster for NAU men is Futsum Zena Salasi. He was okay. third in 2014, fourth in 2013, fourth in 2016. And I believe he was top 31st. 40? 31st, 31st as a freshman. 31st as a freshman. Yeah. That is insane. Three times you're at top four. Yeah. That shows you know how to run cross country. Yeah, he doesn't have an individual title. Well, none of these any of you guys have an individual title when it comes to cross country. But if you are top four three times, that means you know how to run this race and you want that guy. I mean, he would have had a potential. I mean, I think, I mean, Cesarek was the re he well, he got third, third when he raced Cesarek and Jenkins when they went one, two, right? I believe he was the third yep. guy. So yep. that's a hard year to be in. Uh, but yeah, Flitzum is my first uh, invitee to the alt star roster. Of Futsum course. No, he's an obvious choice. And I remember history doesn't look kindly on me. I remember in 2015 when it was announced that Footson was going to redshirt. So as they were going to go all in in 2016 to be Heinz last year. And we were thinking, at least I thought he's redshirting because he thinks NAU is going to have a shot to win the title next year. Like there's, there's no way. <laughs> and then sure enough, they come back and they, and they, they win that title. Uh, and then they went two more. <laughs> his legacy is, you know, he was one of the, the, for lack of a better term, one of the founding fathers of of this dynasty. I know they lost last year, and AU did, but you know, there there may na there may not be three straight titles without Futsum Zena Selassie. And I know he only was a part of one national title team, but you know, he's a big part of what NAU was and is as a team. So yeah, he's a foundational member, of course. Okay, your turn to pick a teammate for Futsum. I mean, this is pretty easy. There's a lot of guys to choose from. Uh, and although his last performance at NCAAs was not a good one, he finished outside of the top 100, so not not great. Uh, I'm going to go with David McNeil, Ooh. former Aussie great, couple-time NCAA track champion. He was second in 2009 behind Sam Chalanga, but in 2010, David McNeil beat Sam Chalanga twice on the track in the 5,000, the indoor and outdoor NCAA championships. Uh, this guy was a superstar at NAU before superstars were a dime a dozen for the Lumberjacks. And of course, being the first guy to finish top two, uh, you know, he's tied for the highest finish ever by a Lumberjack. He's got to be on the, he's got to be on the roster. Yeah, he uh 2009 he was second, 2007 he was 10th and 2008 he was 15th. So at three times in the top 15. Um and he yeah, so definitely I mean in this track pedigree being able to to beat someone like Sam Chalanga, not many people were doing that in college. So uh the only person who was even close to doing that was really Galen Rupp, right? So if you're in that same yeah. category, that means something you're 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 pretty you're pretty darn good. So yeah, David McNeil I believe definitely is a we have a really good one two punch right now with Footsum and McNeil. Uh, I, it's going to be hard. It's going to be this is going to be hard to make. Yeah, just as an aside with uh, McNeil, I don't, I cannot remember if he was hurt or he just had a really, really bad day. But we were just talking about his performances. He's got three top 15 finishes, and you think, Ooh, 2010, it's his senior year. He's got a shot to win. He finishes 123rd. He kind of full, pulls a Jenny Simpson in 2009, which I think, ironically, that may have been the same year that Jenny Simpson bombed at, at her national championships when everyone thought she was going to win. So uh, I'm not worried about the, that, though, because he came back and won titles on the track. David McNeil is a great pick. 
All right, my turn uh, to fill out our top three uh, roster spots. I'm going with the great past, present, and probably most likely still in the future, Lopez Lemong, right? This kid, or at the time, this kid, right? He's, an, he's a man now. Uh, he was third in 2007. He was fourth in 2006. So two top five performances. And yep. as we know, Lopez, he's, he's just a legend. Um, I really don't need to list off his credentials of what he did uh, throughout his career, and he's still chugging along. I mean, you look at Lopez's career, though, now, um, his range from 800 to 10K oh is gosh. one of a kind. I, when he won the 10K two, two years ago, was it? When he first won the 10K off year 2018 in, eight, in 18, yeah, he won in yeah, 18. 18. When he won in 18, you know, he had a kind of he had like a, a a decent 10K, but like his winning the 10K was like a big feat because he had won from such a wide range of not right. only even time frame but event frame. And then also now, though, this past year when he ran a really fast 10K, his 800 time, 1500, all the way up to 10K times, he has like a resume that literally. I don't think – I think he's, like, in a list of, like, three people in the world all time for, like, the range. So, Lopez Lamont, uh, he's going to bring that speed. He's going to bring that leadership, and uh, he's going to be in my top – he's going to be on this roster. I, and he, no one's going to debate that. So, Lamont won a couple titles on the track in the NCAA. But I think the thing that's most impressive is in 2006 – he was fourth in the NCAA Outdoor 800. 12 years later, he was winning the 10,000 at USA's. That's the equivalent of like Roshan Rooms in 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 15 years or 12 years or whatever, win, winning the 10,000 at USA's. We know that's not going to happen. No offense to Roshan Rooms. He's not going to have that range. But I mean, that's the equivalent. It's like a very good NCAA 800 meter runner. And then he can translate that all the way up to the 10,000. Now it would take a many, many years for that to happen. So maybe some athletes could develop, but that you just don't see that where athletes Wait. are able to do that well in the eight. And then years and years and years later, become an outstanding 10,000 meter runner. Wait, hold on. So what place was he in 2006 in the 800? Fourth. Okay. So hold on. Who was fourth uh, this past year in 2000? Who was fourth in the 2019 800? Was he was he rooms? I I think Legat Festus Legat was third, and I I I I'm I may be forgetting who was. Right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who was fourth? So fourth, fourth uh, in the 2019. Because think about this: he was fourth in 2006 outdoor, right? And then 2006 yeah. cross country. So later that year, he gets fourth in cross country. <laughs> Yeah. So that'll crazy. be like Carlton Orange of Texas A&M <laughs> getting yeah. fourth at this past year's cross country meet. Carlton Orange. I mean, it's, imagine Carlton it just Orange does not fourth. happen. Like it, it does not happen. <laughs> there there's never been another like Lopez Lemong, at least on the men's side. Like it's it just it does not happen. I mean, the uh the UTEP guys, uh Courier and um Saruni, you know, they're all-time great 800 meter guys. Uh they finished like dead last in cross country. Like, when yeah, they, I mean, if you look some at of that results, was an effort. Some of that was an effort yeah. related thing, but they're not nowhere near what Lamont was and is. You have to have them on your roster, yeah. and really, you could have them. I mean, the dude could run a four by four, and and run a ten k. Like, come on, this is ridiculous speed, ridiculous range. Probably one of the rangiest humans in in history. Like, it's ridiculous, and he's had it Rangiest for years, and he still humans. has it. He could still run a good mile. And he can still run 27 <laughs> minutes in a 10K. Like, what the heck? It's crazy. All right. All right. So that, we are we are three. Footsum, Lamong, and McNeil. Who's your am who's I, our fourth guy? Okay. I got to pick the other guy who's finished top two in his career in cross country. I got to go with Matt Baxter. A member of the three-peat, an integral part of the three-peat. Baxter, he... He finished second in 2017, in the famous gas, gas, gas year in Louisville. Went 2-3 with Tyler Day. He was 11th in 2016. And then in 2018, uh, he was, I believe, 15th. So 
Baxter just a solid, solid piece. I mean, that 2018 performance, it was kind of an off race for him, and he still managed the top 15 to lead NAU to that third straight title. Uh, not as strong, obviously, on the track, but had some good moments in the 10,000. Uh, but we're talking cross country, and you want Matt Baxter on your NAU all-time team. I have no, uh, no um, debate on that. My only debate is I was surprised you picked Baxter over his teammate Day. You know, I know Baxter has that second place finish, uh, but Day obviously has his third place finish right behind Baxter. But Day, though, showed up the next year and was a top 10 guy yeah. the next yeah. year when they needed him the most. Um, and Day then has now gone on to, like we saw, break the American indoor collegiate 5k record. I know it's a very specific record, but he did it. And Tay has shown day has shown like he's gone to the next yeah. level track wise, speed wise. Um, so I'm going to go with Tyler day as our number five guy, which I don't even <laughs> think, I think he'll be end up being maybe he's a number three guy potentially, mm -hmm. but Tyler day, you know? Yeah. I mean, we were to see what no, he's doing. He's good. He's he's yeah. he won he's he won athlete of the year uh for indoors mm -hmm. apparently uh which means maybe he'll win the Bowerman which will be weird I'm not sure if they're gonna have the Bowerman maybe they'll cancel the Bowerman they have to cancel the Bowerman you can't give out a Bowerman I would award think so we had no indoor yeah. championships and no outdoor season period but hey however you can get it I mean some people would not probably count as you as they probably put a little asterisk next to your Bowerman win if he got that but. Maybe we can make him one out of paper mache and send it there to him go. via FedEx or something. But uh, anyways, in this regard, him as a number five man, that is a, an embarrassment of riches. If you can have a 13-16 guy uh, and a 745 man as your as your fifth, a guy who's finished third in Sibley Cross. I mean, this is going to be like a UTEP team from the from whenever it was that they were dominating the 70s or whatever. We're going we're gonna to have like, you know, we're going to have like four or five in the top six. Like, it's, it's crazy. So these top five, I think, are pretty much on 98% of predictors' top uh, top seven, right? Okay. The five athletes will be in the, in the, in the seven all-time great NAU athletes. I think it's our six and seven runners where there's going to probably be debate. Would you say? I okay. think because that, that's when we're going to be like, Are you, really, that might be a reach. Oh, you're leaving this person out, keeping that person in. Uh, so this is when okay. I feel like it gets really hard to really come down to who are our sixth and seventh runners for NAU's all-time team. I'll let you go first. Good. I don't think it's going to be too hard to – I don't think you can argue too much with this guy. But I got to take him at, at a specific stage. I'm picking Diego Estrada. But this has to be long hair version, Diego Estrada. I like him with that swagger. I cannot have the short hair of the modern Estrada. I need long hair Diego Estrada, who's going to give me a top 15, top 20 type finish. Let's see. He did that on how many occasions? Just twice. But Estrada ran in an era... And you look at it and you're like, ah, oh, his best finish was seventh. I mean, we're looking at some of these greats and like these guys are peppering the top five. Like, I need that type of here's the thing though. Estrada ran in the era of Lowie Lelang, Kennedy Kathuka, Chris Derrick, Luke Pesquedra, like all those guys we consider greats. And Estrada, he swung it in cross country, a little bit better, I think, on the track, but I want an Olympian. In, in in my number six spot, and you can't you can't argue that a thirteen fifteen guy. If we're gonna have Tyler Day on there for running thirteen sixteen and seven forty five, I need a guy who's run thirteen fifteen outdoors and seven forty four uh, indoors, albeit on an oversized track. Estrada was great on the track. I I if we have long hair version of Estrada, and that's crucial. And I think he would in this modern era because NAU has really. Uh, they they really commit to the long hair bit. A lot of guys on the team go no haircut. Uh, I am having Estrada as my number six man. No pressure on him. He could have a bad race. He could also show up in your top two. So Diego Estrada, number six man. So I I, I like that. Yes, he deserves it. I think um, a lot of his finishes, like you said, would be higher if it wasn't for the era he was in. Um, 
So yeah, I agree with that. Now this is the hard one. My my seventh the the seventh runner, right? Who is the seventh runner here? Now looking at the list of like remaining guys to choose from, there's yeah. they all have something in common. They all are kind of one hit wonders in a weird way. You look at Bo Reed. He was third in 1988, and then his next best finish. I'm not sure if twenty he get twenty fifth. At 25th. So, like, yeah. he popped one really well, right? Then you have yeah. someone like Jordan Ch- Chippa- Chippagama, right? Another guy. Yep. Popped a, a top five finish, but doesn't have another top great finish as well, right? Okay. Richard Slin- Slinley was six in 1971, but we haven't seen, don't see him on the rest of the board. Milford, Milfred Tawawina. I don't even know these guys. 1988, eighth. Peter Lemong, he's the ultimate. He popped the fast one, right? He popped the great one in 2017. Mm, two Lemongs. Larry- I wouldn't argue against two Lemongs. So, yeah, that would be fun. Having two Lemongs on the team, the oh little my gosh. brother dynamic would be great. they push each other because now Peter Lemong isn't going to want to lose to his brother, so maybe that would help him be even better. Yeah, but looking at all these though, things- he's going to lose to his brother. He's going to lose to his But there's something brother. about brotherly, like – you know, sometimes you can push yourself to, to extreme limits when uh, you're going up against your brother. As a okay. person with a brother, I, I can uh, attest to that. But yeah, all okay. these other guys, they all have just like one top 10 performance and then the rest aren't there, right? And so here's the okay. thing. Do I want to risk? I, I feel like I'm gambling because I feel like no matter who I pick, there's a good chance I'm picking them to have an off day because they've only shown consistency one time in their four years. So okay. with that information, I'm deciding to hedge my bets for the future. And I want this podcast to live in infamy. And I want people to listen to this podcast on April 30th, 2020 again on April 30th, 2024 and be oh. like, Oh, Gordon was right. He knew how to create the all time top, seven and a roster and so therefore i'm gonna put in the high school f- senior nico young onto Whoa. this all-time and a roster whoa With the thought that four years from now this guy's gonna have two to three top 10 performances and then if you have two or three top 10 performances you're on that roster so hedging my bets i think you can do this with the seventh man it's not like this team is gonna be screwed over because Nico Young is on that on the team with them because you know, get only five score. But hey, you never know what could happen with the seventh man, especially in 2024 when we realize, hey, our seventh man is a two time NCAA champion with four top 20 performances. You know, Listen, you never know. I can't believe you're taking the risk of a hypothetical top seven cross country team. You're you're taking this risk. By putting a guy who's never put on an NAU uniform. That's huge. I mean, I know you're you're a guy who who takes his fair share of risks, but this is this is a step too far. I need somebody <laughs> who's worn the jersey. I also want a guy who's got a chip on his shoulder. And we saw what that chip did for him during the indoor season this past winter. Ooh. Luis Grijalva. I, I am not leaving a 743 guy who who has got a top 25 cross country finish, who has also probably has the and not probably but almost assuredly has the uh what is what am I why can't I think of the name what's the name of the dome at NAU I the the dome it's called the dome just the dome there you go yeah. Got the don't if he would have officially recorded it and somebody would have filmed it and got some FAT timing, he would have the dome record for the mile. This is Luis Grijalva. He did it after NCAA indoors was canceled and ran like a uh, converted what 352, 353. The guy would have the NAU record by a mile if it was official. I'm just saying he had a little swagger. Running poorly at NCAA Cross in 19. I want him as my seven man because I think he could pop a big one. Right now, he's clearly better than Nico Young. Yeah, maybe in 2024, we're looking back and Nico Young's collected multiple titles. I can't take that risk right now. I don't know how he's going to respond to Flagstaff. He may, he may end up like 
coming up. He may hang around with Blaze Farrow too much, you know? And, you know, Blaze Farrow, <laughs> yeah. great guy, but like he's Blaze Farrow is like drinking anchovy tomato soup in a bike shop all day. Like I need a guy who's ready to go and angry and committed. And I know I'm getting that out of Luis Grijalva. While I understand the argument that, you know, you can't take the risk on Nico Young, I mean, in the end, we're both projecting people who have yet to finish in top 10 in cross-country history, right? That's so true. our other six guys, they all have top 10 performances, and you want to throw in someone without a top 10 performance. I want to throw someone mm -hmm. without a top 10 performance. And luckily, we'll see yep. them as teammates, you know, in a few months, right? So they're, yes. they're going to both be on the team together, and maybe they will do this. Maybe whoever finishes higher at the 2020 NCAA Cross Country Championships in Stillwater, Oklahoma, we'll, we'll go over to them and we'll give them the official seventh man go. plaque. You are officially our seventh man on the virtual all-star NAU team. And we'll hand that to okay. either Luis or Nico at, at in Stillwater. Does that sound okay? We'll just, we'll have a, we'll have I'm a there for that. Key snubs on our list here of top seven, Bo Reed. I mean, the guy was third in in 1988. Multiple All-American finishes, also 25th in 1986. We also left off Jordan Chipagama, fifth in 2009. Who could forget Richard Sliney, sixth in 1971. I thought about throwing you a curveball and just picking him for no other reason than his name, Richard Sliney. He could be Dick Sliney. I mean, I don't want to get too inappropriate, but that's a name I want on my cross-country team. Uh, we also mentioned Peter Lemong. We, we missed out on the chance to have two Lemong brothers. Milfred Tiawina, don't know anything about him. Larry Chumley, he, Chumley, he was ninth in 84. Uh and Henrik Onstrom and Travis Laird also top 10 finishes in their careers from, from generations past. So there were some names we left out, uh, of course. And if you need somebody to finish between 35th and 40th, we could have had Jordy, Jordy Beamish. I mean, you know, the guy is <laughs> He's really an NCAA good. champ, and he, he knows how to finish right inside that All-American uh, All spot. So, you know, perhaps we could have included him, but we did not. And other recency bias uh, picks, kind of with names, because we remember Brian Schrader was a great NAU mm -hmm. athlete, finished All-American multiple times. Yep. Matt McElroy, the transfer yep. from Oregon, I believe. He went to Oregon or Oklahoma State? I forget which one. He transferred. Uh, Oklahoma uh, State. Schrader Oklahoma went to State. Oregon. Schrader was yeah, Oregon. Schrader. Uh, but then, I mean, and we also, another guy who is, like you said, kind of like the Jordy Beamish, uh, Andy Truard. He was 35th mm -hmm. and 37th. People forget Truard was... And then in two, 2017, Truard was like running better than like Baxter. And he, he was like right up there with Baxter and Day the entire mm -hmm. regular season, but just had a bad race. I mean, gets 35th. Yeah. Uh, but Truard yeah. then went on to, you know, win the 3K that year. So yep. clearly, Truard was in the same realm with Bay, Day and Baxter, but just didn't put it together in, in Louisville that one day. Uh, but Truard has shown that, and like you said, you have him. As an Oliver mentioned, an all-time NAU athlete, Truard might be another flyer to maybe potentially give that seventh man plaque to. Unrelated note, I know Andy Truard joined the Oregon Track Club after leaving college. Where has he been? Is he hurt or something? I don't know. That's he a good twice mistake. last year, and it was two road five five Ks. Yeah, I'm guessing he's hurt. Been, yeah, must have been hurt. Uh, hasn't done a whole lot since then but uh yeah we yeah we we mentioned you know beamish could be on there uh we all those guys that i was kind of just listing off uh yeah they had some good groups in the 2012 to 2014 range before they really got going to 2016 2018 but i want guys who know how to win ncaa titles we saw that i think the inexperience of some of the guys in 2019 may have doomed their team. Also, BYU had a good race, and we mentioned Grijalva didn't have a good day and Beamish, but I want guys with experience, so I'm going to have as many 2016, 2018 guys as I can fit on that roster. All right, so here's our roster. We have Futsum, Zena Selassie, David McNeil, Matt Baxter, Lopez Lamong, Tyler Day, Diego Estrada, and then we're having a runoff for the seventh spot in 2020, Stillwater, Oklahoma, 
Yes. Watch it live. It's going to be Luis Grijalva versus Nico Young for the seventh man. I like that. I'm I'm ready for it. I'm going to be two California guys going at it for a spot on the all-time NAU top seven. It comes with a, uh, well, I was going to say it comes with a, an Amazon gift card, but you can't give anything to, in it to NCAA athletes. It comes to, it for all those people yeah, that are graduating, they get an Amazon gift card. And uh, at uh, for the NCAA athletes, they get nothing. So th- there you go. I just This is going to be a great storyline. I mean, the internal battle between Grijalva and Young, will it tear the team apart? of them both fighting for the seventh man spot on the flow track podcast virtual nau top seven i'm kind of on worried April 30th. I mean, this, this, yeah this might ruin the team culture they're gonna start you backstabbing could. each other start pranking each other in the you know pulling the fire alarm in each other's you know hotel rooms it's gonna be it's gonna be brutal it could absolutely Everyone happen. Wants the seventh man award they do absolutely I'm just saying you're going to be regretting this when Nico Young's working at Trader Joe's in 2024 <laughs> and he wants to talk to you about what what uh what the benefits of CBD. I'm I, I think you're you're going to be really regretting this pick. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll see. We'll see. Cool. So that wraps up the uh NAU virtual top 7 uh all-time rosters. Pretty fun to do. We'll probably do this for other schools down the road yeah. on the podcast then maybe put together an ultimate cross country meet to see which team is number one. I do think this NAU team is a podium contender uh, <laughs> because yeah. I mean, yeah, I think, I think they're, I think they're pretty, pretty, pretty good. So yeah, uh, that does it for me and Lincoln again, email us flow track podcast at gmail.com. Check out the pod on the site. Just go to flow track.com slash flow track flow track podcast we're also on spotify itunes stitcher google play you name it listen on your runs get out there have fun and uh we'll see you guys tomorrow bye